بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم رسپیکٹڈ آڈینس ٹوڈے اور ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن ایز این ایکیوٹ کیس آف واک کیاناگی ہیراڈا سنڈروم دا پیشنٹ واز اے تھرٹی ٹو ایئرز اولڈ فیمیل ہو پریزینٹیڈ ٹو اس ان سپٹمبر ٹو blurry vision and floaters it was her uh, first episode there was no past history of any eye surgery any trauma nothing like that she came to us in emergency and her vision was 2060 both eyes and pressure was 15 and 16 so we started examination and your segment was normal But when we did dilated frontus examination, we found that there were multiple age pockets of subreptinal fluid over there. And in this uh, fundus photograph, it can also be seen that there are multiple areas you can see. But in the central, there is superiorly something like bullous retinal detachment, which looks localized in this photograph. So let's see another slide, same picture, multiple areas where we can see as if there are focal areas of subretinal fluid dispersed in different areas. So we started our investigation, we went for the FFA and this is the FFA findings you can see in this, right side there is fundus photograph and left there is a those uh, multifocal areas of pinpoint leakage multifocal areas of pinpoint leakage can be seen here hyperfluorescent areas corresponding to the right fundus photograph this is another well localized area which can be seen central pooling of the dye actually actually there are focal leakage areas but when they join together they assume and they they, they, they attain the shape of this bullous localized serous detachment it is beautifully shown here in this uh, fluorescein angiography diagram let's see another here again focal multifocal leakage areas which ultimately led to the previous uh, slide findings it has shown hyperfluorescent areas we also did the oct and in oct we can see here that the rp is having folds you can see and uh, there are subretinal membranes which are making different septi and there are also subretinal hyper reflective dots plus there is intraretinal fluid can be seen so this is a classical presentation you will see in VKH acute phase and any doctor who is working in the periphery should differentiate acute phase of VKH from CSCR because this is something very critical. The timing in this disease is very critical and crucial. So this is beautifully shown here the wavy pattern superiorly and the septa hyperreflective dots everything so coming to the next slide this was again of the uh, fluorescein angiography with leakage in the later relatively late phase and pooling of the dye yes now This is another thing, 
this is OCT and face. OCT and face. You can see here in this case there is fingerprint pattern you can see the lines over there. In the center you will see a localized uh, area of fluid but superior and inferior to this you will see fingerprint pattern. The fingerprint pattern shown in this uh, slide is basically due to distension of outer plexiform layer and Henle fiber layer. It causes distension over there of these two layers and uh, then these patterns classical representation develops which is being shown in this slide. Let's see another slide. Again same pattern, same In the left slide, uh, uh, OCT and face, uh, the fingerprint pattern is not that much, but localized uh, uh, area of C uh, retinal detachment, serous, that can be seen. Uh, now going towards the OCT, again. You can see the thickness has gone up to 1143 in the left and uh, inferiorly there are RP folds and uh, hyper reflective material dots in the retina with intraretinal fluid. This can be seen here and uh, now we go towards the right again. This is a CT. Thickness is 1206 in the right. Septae have been formed. And uh, same pattern like this. So this thing is very important as I told earlier in differentiation from the CSCR in any hospital. So that patient can be referred to tertiary hospital. So we decided to go for the B scan. Here it is. The B scan is done and uh, we can see here areas of uh, shallow peripheral choroidal detachment. Retinal choroidal layer thickening is there and dome shaped elevated RD seen posteriorly and even macula was off. The shallow peripheral choroidal detachment was more in the left as compared to the right. So we decided to investigate this patient. Routine blood works were done. Complete blood count, renal panel, liver function tests, and uh, PPD was done. blood sugar level. So the results are that PPD after 48 hours was 12.57. It was negative. NCA was uh, also negative. Myeloperoxidase 0 0.16 and proteinase 3 1.70. C-reactive protein 5.3 and rheumatoid factor was less than 10. Syphilis screening was done and it was non-reactive. She was 32 years old lady, so pregnancy was ruled out. And after getting approval from our internal medical team, we decided to admit the patient and start in, in IV methyl prednisolone, one gram which was infusion given over 60 minutes for five days. We also started mycophenolate mofetil, one gram 12 hourly, cell sept, 
and alpha calcidol and calcium carbonates were also started. The patient was given treatment, stayed with us for almost one week. The patient was discharged on prednisolone 70 milligram daily for 10 days at home and later on tapering dose and also advised to continue mycophenolate moftel 1 gram 12 hourly. And now these are the latest uh, OCT you can see the retinal thickness in both these has decreased there are no more fluid no more septa both these showing up to 216 and 219 micrometers and the condition has improved a lot. Let's have a look at the fundus photograph. No more uh, bullous serous detachment and uh, of course there are certain changes showing this earlier episode of um, VKH attack but otherwise the condition was much more better. So the take home message for us is to diagnose it early, to differentiate it from CSCR and refer to tertiary care hospital where the patient can be managed. Our management protocol is that usually we start with the stronger medication and control the disease and then continue the patients on the maintenance dose. Thank you for your attention and time.